Yo, yo, yo! What's up, y'all? Oh, shoot. Welcome back to Wingate TV. I am back here with Doki Doki Literature Club. It's time to end this. Well, at least that I think to end this because we just did the other side story, Reflection, and then the last one on there was called Self Love. So we about to get right into it because I'm ready to see how this thing ends. If it ends here, we'll find out. Let's do this. All right. It's been one day since Yuri's letter was delivered to Natsuki with Monica's help. Wait, wait, that just happened. Why do I act like I didn't just see that? So you, you gotta give me, you gotta cut me some slack. Don't say nothing. Because Yuri chose not to attend the club meeting that day, she and Natsuki haven't faced each other since. Although it's only lunchtime, Yuri finds herself anxiously counting the hours until she would need to face the outcome of her efforts, whether good or bad. And because of passing by students was making her feel even more anxious, Yuri picked out the most secluded spot she could find to spend her lunch. How y'all doing? Are y'all good? Hope y'all doing good. Because the staircase is under maintenance, no student will have any reason for coming here. It's such a relaxing feeling to have a moment of solitude in the middle of a frantic school day. <laughs> so the person that you were trying to avoid is the first person you see. Oh, you're thinking, no one's gonna come here. It's it's closed off for maintenance. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, look at that. You're gonna have to face your fear sooner than you thought. What are you doing here? Uh, um, I, I just... Yuri grips her book with enough force to wrinkle the pages beneath the pressure of her thumbs. Well, what are you doing here? Dot, dot, dot. She can't say shit. I just came to get a drink from the vending machine. The other one is out of the drink I like. Yuri notices Natsuki fidgeting with a few coins between her fingers. We already know she doesn't have much money at all. She nods, avoiding eye contact. Natsuki, also looking away, shuffles over to the vending machine. It's so quiet that every one of her movements seem to reverberate through the entire stairwell. After far too long, she finally receives her beverage, which then she fidgets with in the place of the coins. It's some kind of iced tea. But instead of leaving right away, Nasuki just stands in place. She glances all around her. It's like way too quiet back here. It's creepy. I, I, I mean, that, that's not what I meant. I, I, I mean, it's totally cool that it's your thing, or whatever. Like, I can see how it suits you, so... Not because I think you're creepy or something. I, I didn't mean that either. You know, I'm just going to stop talking. That seems like a better idea anyway. It's okay. Everything is okay. Yuri finds herself attempting some words of comfort after hearing Nasuki stammer herself into dejection. Seemingly in response, Nasuki approaches the base of the staircase and hesitantly sits herself down near Yuri. Well, I can leave if you want. Yuri shakes her head. Nasuki twists the cap off her drink and takes a sip. Despite receiving Yuri's general permission, Nasuki doesn't say anything more. Yuri continues to read, or at least pretends to. Yeah, she ain't reading. You know damn well she's freaking distracted. And the two just sit there for a long time. The tension seems to fade a little bit as time passes. Even without any words, this seems to mean at least something. Though it's not clear what that might be. Lunch ends more quickly than expected. Nasuki is the first to stand up with her em empty drink bottle. Are you coming today? To the club? Yuri nods. I'm sorry for being so awkward. I'm really bad at talking about this stuff. I just can't for some reason. I don't know why. But I want to. Eventually. There's no rush. I promise. Thanks. Yeah. Y'all gonna talk. I'll make sure y'all talk. I mean, I can't do shit, but still. It's the next day. We don't even get to the club? They don't show us the club? Come on. I wanted to see that. Nasuki appears from around the corner and steps up to the vending machine, glancing at Yuri as she does so. Today, she seems to be holding some kind of book as well. Oh, you're here again. Oh, different music. 
Well, I just came here to read this, because there aren't any people around here. Oh, I thought you didn't like how quiet it was. Well, I don't. But, but there's no people here. Which doesn't make sense, because there's no people here, so it would be quiet. But you say you don't like the quiet. That shit don't make no sense. I see. I don't. Now, Suki sits down. The mood feels so much different today than it did yesterday. After yesterday's lunch and the club meeting that followed, Nasuki and Yuri are beginning to feel more relaxed around each other again. You know they're gonna fight again, it's bound to happen. Although Yuri's letter is still lingering in the back of Nasuki's mind, she continues to detour around it. But it's okay that I'm here? Yeah, I don't care. I mean, you took this spot as your own anyway, so why would she care? I mostly just don't feel like dealing with the crap I get from my friends about it. Especially since they like, they all just assume I stopped reading manga after I joined the literature club. Not that I'm trying to hide it from them exactly, but I just don't want it to come up again now that I've waited so long for this new volume to come out. Literally months at this point. You don't have other friends who are into manga? Ugh. Not unless online friends count. And oh, excuse me, but the freak. Oh my gosh. And Sayori, that's different because she's not really into it. She just likes it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I get what you're saying. She don't like the shit. Honestly, you're lucky that the books you're into at least look like books, so you don't have to feel like everyone is constantly judging you by what you're reading. That would be so awful. Not that I don't give a shit, though. Especially since I already hate attention so much. Well, it's a good thing I have thick skin, I guess. Okay, you sure don't. By the way, I would totally recommend finding some friends online, if you haven't already. If you're like me, and you have no one to share your hobbies with. Oh, I have a lot of friends, trust me. We do a lot of things. Since middle school, actually. I was especially desperate back then. It's somewhat embarrassing to reminisce about those days. Sometimes I feel like the me from a few years ago would have benefited from a good smack across the face. Oh, whatever. We were all just stupid kids back then anyway. Some of the fanfics I wrote, thank God I used a... a suit. I'm not even going to try it. I already failed. But I liked it at the time. I got a lot of fulfillment out of it. And plus, I can look back and say with confidence that I've become a better person since then. So I don't think I would change anything. I wonder if a few years from now, we'll think the same thing about our current selves. Probably, I'm not gonna lie. That doesn't make you uncomfortable? No, of course not. I don't care what other people think of me, especially someone who doesn't even exist yet. Hmm. Alright, here. Masuki raised her hand to her face and forcibly slaps down her own cheek. Wow. That's me from the future coming to terms with me right now. I also, ow. I didn't mean to do it that hard. Yuri doesn't seem to react. But then, to Nasuki's surprise, Yuri shyly looks the other way before lifting her arm and doing the same thing to herself, loudly smacking her cheek. She turns red and stares into her lap, but is unable to hide a smile, as although it was a really funny joke. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. I didn't know you had it in you. I, I don't. I don't even know why I did that. Maybe I thought it would be funny. Sorry, I, I keep distracting you. You said you were looking forward to reading. I keep on going on about all this nonsense. I'll let you get to your reading. Oh, right. She wasn't worried about that fucking reading. Y yeah, I, I guess I'll do that then. The conversation ends quickly, and Asuki opens her book. She was not worried about that damn book. The two read silently for the remainder of the lunch hour. They get an hour of lunch? Shit, I wish we could get that. But by the whole time, Yuri feels distracted by a twist of regret over having so abruptly forced by the end of the conversation. I mean, do you think that was forced? I don't think that was forced. You're back! It's the next day. That like, are we never gonna see them in the in the uh, club room? Yeah, I'm here to lay low again. Another day has passed. Like this is the third day we're seeing in the same spot. During lunchtime, Nasuki finds herself having wandered to the stairwell once more. 
Hey, did you buy that? Masuki quickly noticed a bottle of iced tea on the staircase where she normally sits. Yuri nods, avoiding eye contact. That's kind of sweet, though. I am not going to lie to you. Yuri's actually very sweet. Like, she knew Nasuki liked that shit. She knows what she was doing. What? Like, like, for me? But you didn't know I was coming today. What if I didn't show up? Well, I, I, I mean, I, I would have to drink it myself, I guess. It was a stupid thing to do. No, it, it wasn't stupid. I just thought, never mind. What I meant to say is thank you, and that it's a really nice gesture. It's it's okay if you don't feel that way, but I do. It was other things I didn't mean. I swear, please believe me. Mm. Yuri pauses, then nods. Talking is hard. I get it wrong a lot too. So I actually believe you. Nasuki exhales in relief. She then sits down next to Yuri and takes a drink. Knowing Yuri, she probably was overthinking it so much that Nasuki's tepid response filled her with self-doubt. I got that on the first try. Tepid? I didn't even know what that means. I'll do something nice for you next time. Please, don't feel obligated. But I want to! I want to do nice things too! Okay. Thank you. You can thank me after I figure out how to do something nice. I'll do it then too. Nasuki sighs. Hmm? What's wrong? Nothing. It just reminds me how I haven't been getting along with my friends lately. Is that why you've been coming here? Well, no, not exactly. I haven't been avoiding them on purpose or anything. We already know she's a son dairy, so she likes to contradict herself a lot. There are just other things I'd rather be doing during lunch lately. I like being around them, we were all just having fun, but they also just can't take anything seriously. So when I, I don't know, when I'm feeling serious, then their attitude just really get on my damn nerves. It's only gotten worse ever since I joined the literature club. How come? I, I don't know. I feel like I used to be really good with just putting up with it, because it would be so stupid to call drama over a joke that I didn't even like or something. But I just have a hard time doing that lately. But it's my fault for being overly sensitive. If I have a problem, I'm not going to demand for everyone around me to change. But, yeah, I know what you're trying to say. Monica and Sierra don't really agree with that kind of thing. But they're not in my position. So it's easy for them to say that. You should just communicate your feelings, or whatever. It's not like my friend group does that kind of thing. I would just be making the ass out of myself. <laughs> she, didn't, she didn't say that. I added that. Sorry, none of this has nothing to do with you. I don't even know why I'm talking about it. It's okay. I like listening. What? Listening to other people's problems? Yes. <laughs> That's weird. Dot dot dot. She don't like being called weird for that. Sorry. I just like learning about people. Do you think it's weird? No, that's not weird. I, I, I probably just misunderstood, so... I don't know. Does that mean I should keep going? If you like... Okay... Well, I don't know what to talk about now. What are some things that you like about your friends? A lot of things. I mean, they're really fun to hang out with. Like, after school, and on the weekends. And they really like my baking. And it's fun to complain about school together. They make me laugh a lot. And we have a lot of good memories and inside jokes. Oh. I'm bad at a lot of those things. Probably everything you just said. So? Are all those things that, that are... Uh, are those all things that are important to you? Well, kind of. But they're not things I need to get out of every single person. Everyone in the club is really different from that. But I'm still friends with them, too. Well, Sari really likes your baking, and, and she makes you laugh, and she complains a lot. That doesn't mean she's anything like my other friends. Well, unlike them, she's a nice person who cares about your feelings. Excuse me? How about you don't talk that way about my friend that you don't know anything about? Nasuki stands up, getting defensive, huh? No, wait. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean it. I didn't want to say something bad. 
Let me just count the times how many times she says sorry. Like, that's probably like the fifth time already. But please don't leave. Dot, dot, dot. Nasuki sighs and shakes her head. It's fine. Is it really? Is it really? As long as you understand that you can't just judge people like that. I'm sorry. Look, that's, that's the seventh time. Nasuki sits back down. You can't just compare friends like that and, like, measure who's better than who. Everyone's different. I'm sorry. <laughs> Was that like the eighth time, bro? Hey, say something different. I apologize. You're, you're sophisticated, right? Say something different. She says the same shit. I just... Dot, dot, dot. I just don't like the people who want to hurt you. Dot, dot, dot. A moment of silence stretches between them. They don't want to hurt me. We just like to tease each other about stupid things. It's fun. I don't like that. Well, that's why I'm friends with them, and you're not. You like it? Dot, dot, dot. Exactly. Think about it. Do you actually like that shit? Just don't worry so much about me. It's not worth it. I'm... How many freaking times? I wish I knew how to help with social conflicts. Like how Monica can. She's good at these things. Not really. Also, I don't always want help. Sometimes it's stuff I have to deal with myself. That's what Monica and Sari never seem to understand. Sometimes all you do is look at them wrong, and they're like, Oh, what's wrong? Is everything okay? You need some tissues for your tears? I just want to mind my own business sometimes, and decide myself if I want to talk about things. The only one who understands that is you. So you really shouldn't be so hard on yourself. You're not as bad as you think. Oh, you don't need to reassure me or anything. I, I mean that, though. Plus, it makes sense that someone who doesn't talk a lot would make a good listener. Thank you. You're also nice. Dot, dot, dot. She doesn't like to be called nice? It's really hard for me. It doesn't come naturally at all. It's so weird because I always thought of myself as someone who can just say whatever's on my mind. But I feel like that only works when I'm annoyed, upset, or I want to say something mean. Why am I like that? You don't have to answer that one. I'm just talking to myself. Yuri nods and remains silent. Nasuki noticed her fidgeting, fidgeting with the pages of her book. How come you like reading so much? Oh, um, well, a lot of reasons. But I just get sucked into it so easily. It's so immersive. Like, I want to be a part of it. I think there are a lot of things about people in real life that make me feel uncomfortable and frustrated. Especially when it comes to, like, following social conventions and group interactions, I just don't really understand it. I have no real desire to participate. But it's different with books. It feels like I always want to be around the characters. I feel such a strong emotional connection with them in ways that I've never felt with real people. So in that way, it can sometimes feel more real than real life. You get what I'm saying? Really? It's that hard for you to be around people? Like, all the time? Fairly often. Especially in group settings. When people are making all kinds of conversation and saying jokes and all that, I don't know what to do. And I just disengage. Oh. That doesn't get lonely for you? I don't think so. I can still enjoy spending time with people one-on-one. -on -one, and I have online friends too, of course. Do you ever do you ever wish that you could be friends with the characters in your books? All the time. Like literally that's all I think about. Sometimes so badly that it makes my heart ache. Yeah, I know what you mean. Me too. Really? Mm-hmm. A lot. We're 21 Savage yet. <laughs> like, more than anything. After Nasuki mutters that. Silence fills the stairwell once more, but it's a mutual silence, one full of understanding. Oh, 
oh shoot, I didn't expect that to be over already. Alright, so I guess this is the next fucking day. At the same fucking place. They don't move anywhere else. Hey. Oh, hello. I almost thought, oh shoot. I almost thought you weren't coming today. Yeah, well, lunch is already more than halfway over. Masuki had been technically meeting Yuri in the stairwell much earlier, since it had been a good way of dodging her friends when she didn't feel like seeing them. Today, she's holding a large plastic container in both hands. I ran into my friends, so I hung up with them for a while. Is that so? Yeah. I was in a good mood today, so I figured I should. I hadn't seen them in a while, which I had to come up with an excuse for, but I kind of expected that to come. Plus, I had way more of these than I know what to do with, so I figured I would share them too. As she sits down, Masuki opens the lid of her container. We made cupcakes. You know it, that's what I do the best. It's been a while at this point, so I figured it was about time again. You could take one of these if you want. Yuri takes a cupcake and carefully twirls it between her fingers. It's brown with dark green frosting immaculately shaped into a floral pattern and topped it with some kind of glittery powder. How pretty! I just ate, so I may not be able to finish it. Are they for the club? Yeah, I, I guess so. I didn't really think about it. I just made them. That's probably a lie. Ah, uh, I just thought that because green is because Monica's... Ugh. Ah, I just thought that because green is Monica's favorite color, right? Well, yeah, but that's not really why I made the shits. Yuri takes a small bite. This is green tea flavor. Dot, dot, dot. I love green tea. Oh, do you? I'm pretty sure she's told... Has she told them that before? She might have. It was just a random idea I wanted to try, so... <laughs> Don't laugh at me. It ain't funny. I, I'm not. I just felt happy. Oh, so sorry. Usually when... Never mind. What I meant to say is that I'm glad. Sorry for doing dumb things again. I just wanted to do something nice. And this is something I happen to be good at. And I do know you like them. From past experience, I knew she knew that shit. Huh? Yuri turns red, recalling the time she treated herself rather gener generously to Nasuki's cupcakes. Ironically, her mouth was too full of cupcakes for her to stammer and excuse, so she just settles for a disapproving look. How did you get into baking? Oh, well, I don't know. It kind of always just appealed to me. Well, a few years ago, I read this one manga with a lot of baking, so I got like super into it for a while. I was probably making stuff almost every single freaking day. But it's something that I always knew I liked anyway. It's like, baking is like art. But when you get good at it, it gets more delicious too. I'm struggling to imagine myself putting my heart into something so artistic, knowing that it would just be eaten afterwards. Yeah, maybe you're too practical for it. I think I prefer to be on the receiving end. That's my ever favorite part about it. It's something that I can do that makes a lot of people happy, like unconditionally. Everyone is always so thankful, and in that moment, you get to be the bringer of joy. I don't know, it just makes me feel... Value? Yeah, I guess that word will suffice. So, were you able to make up with your friends today? Hmm? There really wasn't anything to make up with them about. We weren't fighting or anything. You, you weren't? Maybe I misunderstood. It only turns into a fight if I lose my cool, and that's just unnecessary drama. That only makes things worse. So, they're not going to stop? I mean, it only happens sometimes anyway. It's just the way they are. I'm the only one who ever has a problem with it. It's not worth it. Especially when I have somewhere to go now when I don't feel like hanging out with them. Oh, I see. The cupcake's empty floor wrapper audibly cranks, crinkles as Yuri clenches a fist. The freaking music changes again. I'm glad that the situation is resolved and that you don't have to avoid them anymore. 
Yeah. I'm not so sure. Me too. I'm not so sure that she doesn't have to avoid him. And I don't have to bother you during your alone time anymore. I'm sure you have a lot of reading to catch up on. Yeah. I know that that cupcakes are basically nothing compared to all the stuff you've done for me. But that's the best I can do. So you can have the rest of them. Masuki grabs the box and slides it over to Yuri's feet. Yuri stares at the box. Then she shakes her head and slides him back. You should save them for your other friends. But I made them for you. Masuki's voice whines as she protests. I know. And I like them very much, exactly as you thought. You succeeded. But I know you, I know you care about making your other friends happy too. And if this is the way you know how to make that happen, then I'm not going to take it from you. No, they were for making you happy. You make me happy. I don't need no damn cupcakes. You're worth more than some cupcakes to some people. That's why they want to spend time with you. And be your friend. Without warning, tears pour from Nasuki's eyes. Uh-oh. Oh, uh, it got sad. She pulls her knees to her chest and starts sobbing into her arms. Masuki, I'm such a bad person. Uh, uh, um, Yuri stammers, feeling panic. I, I didn't mean to say anything bad. Masuki shakes her head and wipes her eyes. You didn't. I just... Masuki tries to choke back her sobs, but struggles to speak through them. I just really hate myself sometimes. And I feel so wrong when you say those nice things to me. Like I don't deserve it. I I'm sorry. That's like the tenth fucking time. No, I am. I'm so difficult. And I can't can't think of a single thing about myself that somebody would like. Dot dot dot. And I hated myself for bothering you during lunch. I just thought it was my chance to be a good person, like to be nice and do the things you wrote about in the letter. I knew if I tried that in the club, Sierra and Monica would be super annoying and make a huge deal out of that. You know, I think a lot of these negative things too about myself. I never feel like a good person. I always scrutinize everything I say, and later I'd feel like I said all the wrong things. I just spend so much time thinking about myself hating myself and feeling like everyone must hate me too. So I understand that through my own experience. And that's why I wanted to write the letter and express my feelings. It it pained me to see the things in someone else that I saw in myself. Dot dot dot. Nasuki sniffles. Yuri rustles through her bag and pulls up some tissues, then hands them to Nasuki. Monica told me that it takes a good person to reflect on those things. The desire to improve yourself. That makes you a good person. So don't worry so much. Also, there are some things that people would like, so don't say that shit ever again. Like what? Please tell me, cause I don't see it. Dot dot dot. She can't say shit. Like like how you're fun for people to be around. And you're not shy. And you know how to make people laugh. And you're very passionate about things. And you know how to take the lead. And you care a lot about other people. I, I just... A lot of other things. Uh, oh. Well, now you're making me feel really embarrassed. Well, well, you're the one who asked. And don't you think I feel embarrassed? Like, I said all that. Nasuki tries to hide a smile. Then she sighs as it fades again. Every time I come here... I always think it's the last time, but then I keep coming back for some reason. Is that bad? Dot dot dot. Just really confusing. I mean, my friends and I go way back, so ditching them all the time feels like, I don't know. Feels like what? Nasuki's voice gets quiet. Maybe I'm scared that they'll get mad at me. Hmm. I really don't know what to do. She pauses. Yuri stares into a distance. Ugh, excuse me. Tracing her eyes along the patterns of the floor tiles while she thinks to herself. What would you do, hypothetically, 
if your friends were happy for you instead of mad at you? Happy for what? Happy that your new club is making you happy. Well, that's just not a fair hypothetical. Natsuki says that, but with little confidence in her voice. I always told myself that I don't rely on approval of others to be happy. And I still feel that way, but I'm spending time with people who put me down whenever I don't have their approval. That's probably what is making me feel so confused. Because I'm threatened out of the things that should make me happy. So no matter what, it's like I have to be unhappy to be happy. It's making my head hurt. That must make it really difficult to feel comfortable with yourself. Being made to feel like you're wrong just for being the person you are? Dot dot dot. Damn right. It really goes against everything I believe in, doesn't it? It goes against the kind of person I want to be. I'm fed up with it. I'm fed up with a lot of things. Masuki presses her palms into her forehead and shakes her head. I know what's best for me, but I keep convincing myself out of it. It's so much easier to be comfor comfortably unhappy than it is to do something so scary. To do what? You know, to end it. With them? Yasuki nods. I didn't think you were actively considering that one as an option. I wasn't. Until recently. It's just one of those things where like... It's been a certain way for so long that you just, you just get used to it. I know how that feels. I really know how that feels. Like, so much of you has gone into it. So much that it feels like that's just how your life is. And throwing it away is like throwing away such a big part of your life. Facts. She's speaking facts. I feel her. I feel her on this. It makes me feel sick to think about. My super size. It's just really scary. It's terrifying. What are you scared of? I don't know. A lot of things. Like being alone, not having anyone to talk to or hang out with, not being able to replace what I have with them, and I don't want them to hate me, and I'm scared that they'll hurt me for going against them. Physically? Not physically, because I'll beat their asses. But Yuri clenches her fist. Nasuki, what? If anyone even thinks to cause you harm, I will unleash hell upon them. <laughs> she said that with such a stern face. Nasuki snorts in laughter. Don't laugh at me. I'm sorry, I was just, I like that. That's all. I've never seen that side of you. Oh, well I meant it. I know you did. Masuki gives Yuri an endearing look. I needed that. Mm. As the conversation lapses, Nasuki again slides her box of cupcakes over to Yuri. Just take them, okay? I don't I don't want other people to have them anymore. Are you sure? Nasuki nods. I'm sure. I will then. I'll enjoy them. Nasuki looks away, but a feeling of warmth spreads through her. She holds on to that feeling, knowing it would give her courage. Oh my gosh. Things are getting very nice. Things are getting very comforting. And it's the next day. Ah, you're here first today. Mm-hmm. And you brought reading material. Mm-hmm. She doesn't seem so happy, though. Masuki is sitting in her usual spot, this time holding a volume of manga while her lunch sits beside her. Yuri sits down as well and opens her own book. It sucks when a good series has to come to an end. Like, it's such a big part of your life, and then one day, there's just nothing left. It makes you feel so empty, you know? Unfortunately, I'm about to experience that myself. I'm on the last book of this series. That sucks. But there's also sa something satisfying about letting the story conclude. I don't know if I want it to go on forever. Maybe. But there are some things I wish could. On the other hand, have you ever read something that overstayed as welcome? Yeah, definitely. I can think of at least one thing I've read that got pretty unbearable, like halfway through, and the ending really freaking sucked. I hated it. 
So it sucks when something good has to end, but it also sucks when they just keep inventing more plot until you don't like it anymore. I can relate to that. You know, I know y'all know Fast and Furious. They keep making movies. Like, they just came out with the 10th one. You don't need that many movies about a racing movie. Like, it's about racing. Cut it out. You don't need that much. I'm surprised they let it go to 10. And then they're supposed to be making another 11. Like, come on. How long y'all gonna let that thing go? I guess it sucks either way. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the nature of all things. They come to an end. The two fall silent. She's speaking facts, though. All things will come to an end. They slowly eat while making their way through their respective breeding material. Except Nasuki doesn't seem to be touching her food at all. Then why do why you say they? You don't go out during the weekends, right? Excuse me? Like, with friends. At the mall. Or downtown. Or whatever. I'm not a total shut-in, you know. Oh, my bad for making assumptions. Well, I'm sure I go out less often than other people, like you and the others in the club. I don't really meet with friends and arbitrarily spend time like that. I'm usually meeting with my board game group. Board game group? I didn't even know that was a thing. It, it doesn't matter, it's just more nerdy stuff. Why do you ask, anyway? I was just curious. I just realized that I couldn't picture it, so I was just curious. Yuri looks at Nasuki and realizes that she's shaking. Don't look at me like that. Sorry. Twelfth time. Nasuki pulls her knees into her chest and puts her head down. I can't take this. Did I do something? Yuri gets flustered, her mind racing over what she may have said or done. I did. I ended it. I texted him earlier, telling him. And then I just blocked him because I'm so afraid of their responses. And now it feels like I'm dying inside. Uh oh. That's... She can't. She don't know what to say. Um... Never mind. She knows what to say. Her favorite fucking line. Totally unsure of what to do, Yuri can barely find any words of support to offer. Meanwhile, the sound of Nasuki's unusually hard breathing fills the air. Then she speaks again, barely above a whisper. Help me. I feel sick and I want to hit my head against things. Please help. I, I, I can't take this. You may be having a panic attack. With that realization, Yuri's demeanor suddenly changes. I, I have experience with this, so I'll help you through it, okay? Nasuki meekly nods through her rapid breath, head still buried in her knees. Yuri slides over to Nasuki and sits on the step behind her. Then she puts her hands on Nasuki's shoulders. Can you feel my hands? Nasuki nods. Her shaking becomes much more apparent through Yuri's sense of touch. Yuri keeps her voice low and gentle. You're safe right now. You're in a good and safe place where nothing can hurt you. Nasuki nods once more. Although Yuri is only touching Nasuki's shoulders, she can practically feel her racing pulse through the base of her neck. We'll do a breathing exercise together. All you have to do is listen to my breaths and breathe along with me. Let's breathe in now. Yuri takes a deep, slow breath. You know Yuri is very good at that. Beneath her hands, she feels Nasuki's shoulders rise as Nasuki takes a breath of her own, trying to mimic Yuri. They exhale together, although Nasuki's breath shakes on the way out. That's good. Let's keep going. Yuri breathes in once more, and Nasuki joins her. They continue like that for a few more cycles while Yuri closely mon monitors. Eventually, Yuri feels Nasuki rest more of her weight into Yuri's palms. Let's focus on the physical world. All you have to do is focus on the feeling of your breaths going in and out and the weight of my hands on your shoulders. You're in a safe and comfortable physical space. Minutes pass in silence. By now, the worst of it has passed, but Yuri is determined not to move away until Nasuki prompts her to. Meanwhile, Nasuki has lifted her head off her knees and her breathing is more, mostly steady. 
Then she takes a final deep breath and slowly pulls herself up to her feet, causing Yuri to let go. She stretches her arms. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to freak out. I don't know what my deal is. You don't have to apologize. This must be enormously stressful for you. Is that going to keep happening? It, it may, or it may not. We can take measures to help prevent it in the future, but I think it will naturally get better over time. Masuki motions to sit back down again, so Yuri moves over. Yuri turns away to pick up her uncle's book from the dusty floor, which she had hastily set down earlier. She brushes the dust off the cover. I, I don't think I could have gotten through that alone. You definitely couldn't have. You're not alone. Feeling shy again, Yuri speaks into her own lap. From now on, you don't have to do anything alone. See, this club, this club, they all stick together. This is how they became so... They, this is how them two became best friends like this. As she says that, Yuri tenses up. It's rare for her to so openly share her thoughts. But something about Masuki, of all people, makes it feel so much more natural to do so. Perhaps because like Yuri, Masuki is so timid and uncertain of herself. Masuki does a good job at hiding it, that it's taken a long time for Yuri to finally realize it. And because of that, Yuri is able to deliver the reassurance that she herself would have wanted. Demonstrating that you deserve the love of others. If you could accept that for the first time, then perhaps you can begin the tumultuous journey of learning how to love yourself. Oh my, I like this. I like this. Day. Every side story has one of these. Do you really mean that? You're probably going to regret saying that if you do. How so? Because I'm probably going to have a lot of free time during the weekends from now on. So you're giving me permission to be as annoying as I want and to drag you around a lot of places. I see. But you already said it, so you can't take it back now. Ah. Uh, well, I suppose I have no choice but to accept that responsibility then. Mm-hmm. I didn't give you a choice anyway. I know a good ice cream place. Oh? That means you'll finally figure out my favorite ice cream flavor. Huh? What are you talking about? Oh, you don't remember? The first day you came to the club, you guessed everyone's favorite ice cream flavor. But for me, you said you had no idea. I do remember that shit. I remember that. Seriously? I don't remember that at all. Oh, wait. Never mind. Yes, I do. I said it was probably green tea. Yuri shakes her head. It's a good guess. But my favorite is usually to get chocolate and raspberry together. Chocolate and raspberry? How fancy. How is that fancy? Oh, I don't know. I feel like I should have guessed something like that. Well, maybe next time I'll try chocolate and strawberry. Hey, strawberry is my favorite. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I knew that. What a coincidence. I think it helps to have something to look forward to. I still have the sick feeling in my stomach, though. But it's easier now to convince myself that I did the right thing. Is there anything better I could be doing? Not that I know of. There's nothing that would make this easy for me. And you already did more than I thought anyone could. Hmm. Come to think of it, we never talked about the letter you wrote. But I feel like we're way past that at this point. I don't even know what to talk about. Except that I think it... It helped me understand my needs a little bit better. The way I like to be treated. And the kinds of friends that I want to have. That's why I wanted to start coming here in the first place, even though I was so scared of causing more problems. I thought... I thought it was a coincidence that you ran into me initially. Oh, uh... Yeah, well, not exactly that. I might have lied about that. What do you mean? Nothing. I, I may have tracked you down <laughs> with the help of Sayori. <laughs> Sayori's a funny girl. That's... But you said... I was shy, okay? I wasn't ready to like... Whatever, you know what I'm saying. Don't make me say it. Well, I guess 
I'm glad that you worked up the courage. Even if it was in your own way. I can tell that you've been making a lot of difficult decisions. It's brave and will make things better in the long run. I think anyone would be proud of you for it. Anyone? Anyone? You mean like you? Yes, like me. I said anyone, didn't I? Like me. You know, I could get used to this. As long as, as long as you don't tease me too much. Fine. Just a little then. You, you can't get away from that. That's fine. I know how uncertain everything feels to you right now. But I really do think that good things are in store. Those are my honest feelings. Thanks. It feels nice to be reassured. two girls continue their conversation through the remainder of lunch, but a new feeling hangs in the air, a feeling of greater certainty in their path forward. In just a few hours, there will be another literature club meeting, where the four club members will happily spend time together. Each of them, all with their own special qualities, has something unique that they can deliver to one another. Through friendship and literature, the club members will continue to grow and find new happiness together. The end of each chapter is the start of the next. Yuri thinks to herself, since she's about to finish her long running series, it would be best to have a new book lined up. Perhaps this weekend will be a good time to visit the bookstore. And take Natsuki with you? Together. Yep. That's a good way to end it. That's a good way to end it. Because it seems like after that, wait, hold on. Let me not speak so prematurely. <laughs> Yo, they tricked me. First of all, the way they ended that side story, and then the way it looked. Why wasn't this on here? Why did why why y'all do that shit? I didn't mean to do that. Why y'all do that shit? Why didn't y'all just put that at the end? Wait, that might that might mean either that's the last one. No, because it seems like from how much... I mean, that did seem a little weird that that was that much space. But it's like, after this, it doesn't seem like they have put anything else. But I guess we'll see. But we do know that that's not the fucking end. Great. But this makes sense. And now that all four of them will be together, now we'll see how they really act after everybody had their little uh, time together alone. So now when they come together, everything should be great. Right? Right? Well, we'll see. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. I'm out. Peace.